Hey guys, this is Brandon at Tailwater Outfitters and today we're tying the hair crab. Alright guys, so the hair crab is a really good uh, wintertime, clear water, uh, pressured, spooky redfish pattern. So uh, it's actually weighted with a tungsten bead so it's going to hit the water you know, not quite as hard as some of your lead eye flies will. Um, as you can see it's a really really small profile that you can get you know kind of slip in front of those spooky fish or slip into a school of those spooky fish and, and hopefully get one to turn on it. So it's a great clear water spooky fish redfish pattern. Alright guys so we're going to start with an Umpqua all-purpose hook in a size 4. I'll even tie this fly down to a size 8 um, so I have 6s and 8s in my box depending on um, you know how skittish the fish are, how pressured they are, uh, what environment you're in. If you're in super clear water, you can go smaller as well. Uh, but today we're going to do a size four, just so you can see it a little easier. And you can start your thread just about anywhere here. I'm going to go back to the the point of the hook. And I'm going to take a piece of monofilament. This just happens to be 16 pound. And we're going to tie that in going back to the hook eye and we're going to tie it straight to the top of the hook shank. You want to get this monofilament really good and locked in because we don't want this, this piece moving on the fly at all. So I'm going to give it some really, really tight wraps here. Uh, and then the weight on this fly is something unique here. Uh, shout out Dave Chenard. Uh, this is an Umqua Tungsten Jig Bomb in a 3 millimeter. And this little bead, it'll be kind of tough for you to see, but it has, uh, you can see the picture of it. It's got a slot on one side, and we're going to run the monofilament through the slot of that bead and cinch it to the top of the hook shank. So the nice thing, once you kind of get this monofilament tied down to the hook, is you can manipulate where this is a little bit back and forth. Um, I want it to be a little bit closer to the hook eye, so I'm just going to push it forward just a little bit, and then we're going to really tightly wrap down that monofilament behind it so it can't slip. Uh, and then you'll cover this up with some thread, just kind of thread dam it on both sides just to really keep that bead from slipping around the hook shank um, or moving because sometimes if you don't tie them tight enough they will kind of wiggle out and you don't want that. So you want it to be kind of hard to move so I'm going to push it pretty hard both directions, get nothing cool uh, and we'll trim out that monofilament. So there's not a lot of materials that are going to go on this fly um, so when I come back to the hook point the next thing we're going to use is a brown barred rabbit strip and ginger. Shout out Adam on this one. Hey, nah, just kidding. Not really though. Uh, and the tricky part about this, this is probably the trickiest part of the fly, is you want your rabbit strip to be just a little bit longer than the shank of the hook on the hide. So I wanted to stick out, you know, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch or so. Um, you know, about that far. We really don't want this to be a very big fly. So I want this to come in the water you know, really gently. I want it to sink really fast and get out in front of those redfish, especially when they're really pressured and spooky. So I'm going to kind of mark where that redfish hide is going to sit on the, the thread. Um, and then we're actually going to push that hide through. I think I said redfish hide. I meant rabbit strip hide. Um, we're going to push that through the hook and then you're actually going to take the hook out of your vise and pull it all the way down and you can go back in your vise here once it's down. Now the, the trick to getting this fly to look you know, kind of clean and organized is I'm going to pull all the rabbit strip fibers that are right where I want to tie it in out and we're just going to put just a couple of wraps right there just to cinch it down and keep it. So we want some movement out of the fur itself but we don't necessarily want any movement out of the hide. Um, then I'm going to kind of tilt this out of the way. Um, you can use a hair clip if you want or a material clip but this stuff usually does a pretty good job of staying out of the way. Uh, and we're going to use some grizzly marabou feathers. Uh, this happens to be in tan. Uh, and this stuff, I really, I want some of this webby stuff to be in the hook so what I like to do is I'll grab the hook and when you wiggle it you see you've got a point you know kind of about right here or so where the feathers really stiff. So I'm going to trim out that little bit of webby stuff right there and we're going to tie in that stiff part of the feather. The rest of that feather will palmer in you know, fairly nicely. So uh, I'm going to leave that just so we get a little bit of webby material on this fly that kind of adds some movement to it. Uh, and we'll tie this in and go straight to the tungsten bead. You can even go a little bit past if you want. 
Uh, and then I like to rotary tie in my feathers. So I'll do a half hitch right here, right at the hook eye. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is just start palmering this fly in. And you'll see how kind of how that feather rotated over on me. You wanna just make sure that those fibers just keep going back towards the back of the hook. Um, and we're gonna wrap that right around the tungsten bead all the way to the hook eye. And we'll trap it. Whoops, I thought I had it trapped. Oh no. Oh man. It almost worked. Let's try that again. Palmer through. Yeah, take two. If anyone out there is saying, hey, even the good flyer tires mess up, well, you missed me at the good part, but that's okay. So we'll trap that one more time. I think I got it that time. I didn't get it that time. Let's do There we go. Pull, pull it back if you want. Then do it the other. I can act like it didn't happen. Ah, that's cool. This is good. Uh, and then we'll tie all that excess back. You can actually leave that on the hook shank if you want to. Um, so you get this kind of webby looking body here that you can pick out and you see I've got a really nice, you know, really sparse um, and really kind of webby body. And you can break that excess feather out too and some of this stuff, this extra stuff you can either push back or, or just break it off. Uh, and then I'm going to take the rabbit strip and come straight over top of the hook shank. So the nice part about this feather is you can actually manipulate these fibers to sit on either side of the hook. So you don't have to, you know, trim out a third of the feather you just palmered in. You can actually use that material. Um, so you don't have to use as much of the feather as you think you do. Um, and I'll come in, trap that rabbit strip down, and trim your excess hide out. Just give that a good pull and that hide and hair will come out. And then we're gonna wrap over this, just make it look nice and clean. If you've got any excess you know, feather fibers or anything you don't like, you can just pull them out or cut them out. There we go. Uh, and then I like to add just a little bit of a flash to a few of these. I won't necessarily have flash on all of them. This is gold crystal flash. Uh, you know, sometimes you can kind of judge what you think the, the fish is doing, but sometimes it seems like they really like flash, and then other days it seems like they don't want any of it on their fly at all. So um, I like to have a few, and then the nice thing about adding flash to the fly is you can always trim it out. Um, it's hard to put it on the fly once it's completed and you're on the water, but it's easy to, to cut it right off of there if you don't need it. Uh, so I'll add a piece of gold crystal flash here, and then lastly, we're going to add our... 25 pound mason hard monofilament weed guard. I'll mash down my point here with my shout out Danko premium pliers. And we'll tie this in here. You don't need a lot of room on this fly. As you can see, it's kind of bulky up to the front anyway, but that's okay. Um, and once you get that good and cinched in, I'm just going to pull that weed guard forward, make a couple of wraps around the back side of it so it sits up. Take just a couple of more to get it sitting where I want it to. That's good there. And then I'll pull it back and trim just on the outside of the hook point. And then you're ready to whip finish. We'll whip finish right behind the weed guard. You guys are ready to go fish the hair crab. Get rid of that little bit of flash here. There we go.